my racist in-law slaps my wife, so I show him what a real evil white man looks like. As a bit of a backstory, I have been dating my girlfriend for a few years now, and between the two of us, everything is perfectly fine. No issues 95% of the time. The only problem that we do have is her immediate family, her parents and siblings. I'm white and originally Dutch. She's originally Japanese. Between the two of us, we don't care, but her family does. Especially at first, her family was against her dating a, quote, white boy. She ignored them, and for the most part, I ignore them too. Over the course of a few years, her father has started to warm up to me slowly, but both her mother and brother still dislike me an awful lot. The mum just gives me the silent treatment most of the time, but her brother is just sometimes downright racist towards me, my family, who he's never met, and my culture. I'm going to call them the in-laws for this story. I know they're not in-laws technically, but it'll make telling the story easier. Now, to the actual event. A couple of days ago, we were at the in-laws' place for dinner in what felt like the hundredth attempt to find some mutual respect. My dad-in-law was fine with it and talked to me the whole time. Mother-in-law was ignoring me for most of it, and brother-in-law was giving me angry stares across the table. After a while, he started to go off on a racist tirade against me and, quote, all you white people, and I'd had enough of it. I stood up for myself, and my girlfriend backed me up. Eventually, brother-in-law stood up and walked up to me and my girlfriend, and in a reflex, I stood up as well. After some insults in Japanese, I'm learning the language but no idea what he said, my girlfriend told him to F off. He then slapped her in the face and spat in mine. He didn't slap her hard, but hard enough to be audible. Now, I'm at least a full head taller than him and almost twice as broad, so when I punched him in the face, he was immediately knocked out. I left with my girlfriend in tow, I was shaking and couldn't drive, so she drove us home while fully assuring me she was on my side. Yesterday, I received a message from the in-laws and they're now demanding I pay for the hospital bill since I apparently fractured his cheekbone. I have no intention of paying it and when my girlfriend read it, she was also like, screw that. I will say one thing in their defense. He gave his sister an open-handed slap, which according to her didn't even hurt her, whereas I absolutely decked him with a closed fist to his face. It all happened within two seconds, so they barely had time to react to that first slap, and by the time they could, he was already knocked out on the ground. I'm not sure what to do and I feel like crap now, especially since I was starting to actually get along well with her dad. The progress seems to be undone now. In short, I one-punched my racist brother-in-law over dinner after he was especially racist and vile and slapped my girlfriend. Now the in-laws expect me to pay for his hospital bills. Girlfriend is on my side, though. Oh, late update. The girlfriend and I have talked about it and also contacted the in-laws with the request to sit down and talk about the whole thing. We heard that both her parents were shocked at how far this had apparently escalated and agreed that we should sit down and talk this out. Neither side wants to involve any kind of authority, so that's good to hear. We still want to cover our bases and we haven't made any promises, but I'm somewhat optimistic at this. This is the first time they've actively wanted to talk to me, especially my mother-in-law. We'll see how it goes. Am I the jerk for whacking my brother-in-law? Yeah, look, I know that violence should always be the last resort in any scenario, but I think there are very few of us who wouldn't feel inclined to retaliate if they saw someone whack their spouse, no matter how mild-mannered we normally are. I'm happy that the other side of the family aren't getting the law involved, even if it's out of a sense of preservation for the brother and not wanting to get him in trouble for revealing that he whacked your sister. I don't know if the author's actions would count as self-defense or not in most circumstances, but I'd hope that they would. Also, even if the in-laws do think that this was purely on our protagonist, I would hope for a positive outcome in perhaps the brother in question never voicing his crappy opinions again. I think a silent, awkward dinner is a million times better than open racial slurs. Perhaps a one-on-one dialogue between our couple and the father-in-law to voice the fact that they've put up with years of not-so-subtle attacks from the others for ages? Why are they holding dinners all the time if they're not actually trying to repair the relationship? I guess it depends on how much the girlfriend wants a relationship with her family, but if I were her, I wouldn't ever want to see the brother again, no matter how little the slap hurt. And as for being spat on, isn't that the clearest sign of hatred across basically all cultures? In any case, you're not the jerk in my book.
I'm just here for the matching outfits. We all wore either a red and blue trim vest or an apron with the company name huge across the back, with it smaller in the chest, large across the chest on the apron. I worked in the tools and hardware department. I'm a woman, which is a problem with a lot of men, but that's a whole other story. I was in my 30s and I loved my job, so I was usually happy. I was asked anywhere between 3 to 10 times a week, do you work here? Of course, it was customer service, so I would generally just smile and say, yes, what can I help you with today? After about two years of this, I was bored with it, so I decided to try change it up. I just decided to try a new response when a really sweet lady approached. She said, excuse me, do you work here? And I said, no, I just got this new vest, so I decided to come here and hang out with people who have the same fashion sense. I said this playfully with a smile. She then went, oh, I'm sorry, and started to leave. I had to say, no, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, I do work here. Can I help you? She just looked at me and then my vest, and I swear you could see the lights turn on and she started giggling. She had recently gotten a divorce and he did all the manly stuff around the house. She was almost afraid of using a screwdriver. She then became a regular. I was told by one of the front-end supervisors that she'd walk in, ask if I was there, and if not, she'd try to find out where I was, then leave. It didn't matter if she wanted to force it, lighting, or a box of screws, and the first two of those requests weren't even my department. Shortly before I left the store for good, we went over to the lumber section and started looking at patios that she could build with her friend's assistance. I was so happy I could make her giggle that one time. Oh, and yes, I did keep using that reply. It usually got a laugh or at least a giggle. Well, this is just a nice and wholesome story to cleanse the palate after our first racist in-law extravaganza. Although there was potential for it to go a different way, there are in fact no jerks here. Just a corny joke that eventually turned into a nice lady's first foray into the world of DIY. And that seems to have at least turned into an enjoyable hobby for her. Going from nothing to replacing one's own faucets and then having the confidence to work on your own patio is a great evolution of her skills that began in your humble store. I hope that her skills continued to grow after you left until she eventually transitioned from Padawan to Home Renovation Master. I'll give the lady some credit and assume that maybe she was asking if you worked there because she wanted to avoid being one of those people from our other stories that gets caught out ordering around a non-employee and being ridiculed in one of our videos. And then she took you at face value and went to find someone else. Science teacher has a swear jar. I took a biology class in my sophomore year in high school and my teacher was pretty cool. She was laid back, funny, and didn't have your typical teacher vibe. She had set up a curse jar in the room and the funds were used to pay for supplies. 25 cents if you swore, but one dollar if you dropped an F-bomb. One day we were doing some group work in tables, the ones with the Bunsen burner and the sink in the middle, and behind me was a kid that was particularly annoying and kind of talkative. Patrick was probably the kind of kid who later went on to cure cancer or create Minecraft. Smart kid, but he was basically a 17-year-old Martin from The Simpsons. Anywho, we're all trying to do our work and Patrick is getting on my nerves. He keeps making loud, bad jokes and poking his head in on our project, telling us what we're doing wrong. I asked him twice just to worry about his own table, but the third time, I lost it. I walked up to the front of the class, pulled out my wallet, grabbed a buck and put it on the teacher's desk. Turned around and said quite loudly, Patrick, shut the frick up. I walked back to my table and sat down. The entire class was silent and was staring at me, and then the teacher. She looked down at the dollar bill on her desk and started laughing out loud. The rest of the class joined in, and Patrick shrunk into his seat. The teacher then said, Well, he paid his dollar. And that's the story of how I told a kid to shut the frick up in class without getting into trouble. I mean, hey, you paid the quarter fine and served your sentence. The Elder Scrolls guards would be satisfied with that, and so am I, dear author. Also, if any Simpsons character was worthy of being screamed at to shut the frick up, it was definitely Martin Prince, so I appreciate you drawing that parallel for me. I've known other individuals who try to micromanage the human beings around them and can confirm that it is indeed annoying as all frick, no matter how good their intentions are. I'm glad that none of the teachers in my high school had such a jar. A bunch of us would have been broke by the end of the first week. Although, to contest your final statement, I don't know whether it's valid to say that you didn't get into trouble for this, as you did in fact pay the fine for your offence, 
even if the judge in question was laughing along with you. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, linked below. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present to you a glimpse into the mind of the customer. So this was about a week ago. I wear a lot of polos since I work in a call center, and usually after work I go to the local supermarket to pick up something for lunch or dinner. I've been mistaken for an employee multiple times, and usually it's not a problem. But on that day, a week ago, something magical happened. I was there looking at Chateau Milk, deciding if I wanted a root beer, cotton candy, or just plain old chocolate. Chateau Milk is one of my favorite things, and as I'm standing there in indecision, I'm approached by a customer. Excuse me, sir, but can you help me? I'm looking for... and they trail off. So I say, what? She stares at me a few seconds longer. Blue milk? Oh, yeah, it's cotton candy flavored. It's great. The customer looks suspicious about something, inspects the milk closer, and then looks to me. You like it? It's probably filled with toxic chemicals. Um... You guys should really take horrible things like that off the shelves. It's probably really harmful, especially for the children. Are you making assumptions just based off its color? Well, yes. No natural food is blue. What about blueberries? The customer stares at me for a moment, her look slowly turning into a glare. Where is your manager? I need to talk to him. I don't work here. What? I said I don't work here. What? What? They were so confused, looking at my shirt for a lanyard or name tag or anything. I grab the blue and banana milk, assuming that my point was made. They try one more time. Uh, so, so you don't have a manager I can report you to? Who's your manager? I don't work here. What would make you think that? Now you're getting it. I put the milk in my cart and go about my day. Throughout the rest of the day's shopping, each time I saw her, she gave me the stink eye. I would have told this story sooner, but I just found the channel. I hope you like it. Blue milk doesn't have to be full of chemicals. You can get it straight out of those creatures from Star Wars The Last Jedi, just like Luke Skywalker did. And now that I've made half of our nerdiest listeners spontaneously ill by mentioning everyone's favorite film in the franchise, let's examine the jerk in the story. She was literally going to try and complain to her manager because you corrected her on something that she was literally wrong about. If you're lodging complaints about that in your day-to-day -day life, folks, take a look at where things went so wrong for you and why you have so much spare time. You're maybe my hero for your, now you're getting it, line. You would have thought that with all our Karen stories on the channel, someone would have used the same move you did by now. Oh, you want to speak to my manager? Reverse Uno. Ha <laughs> ha. Good job, mate. Entitled Mum tries to get me fired for doing my job. So this happened a few months ago at my seasonal job working at a skating rink. I meant to tell it sooner, but I just didn't. This story takes place on a Sunday afternoon during a public skate, and most of it is what I was told happened by my co-workers and supervisors. So during the twice-weekly public skates, in which you pay three bucks to skate for two hours, my job was to skate around and make sure everyone was following the very simple rules. The entitled mother in this situation was breaking the rule of no skating backwards. It's a very common rule to break, and as it was my job, I kindly told her she's not allowed to skate backwards, and this is when the confrontation started. Excuse me, ma'am, you're not allowed to skate backwards during public skates. Oh, it's okay, I'm teaching her how to skate. She pointed at her daughter. I say, okay, but you're going to have to find a way to do that without skating backwards. Do you have a manager I can talk to? At this point, I knew what kind of person I was dealing with and was filled with excitement at meeting a real Karen and dread at dealing with a real Karen as well. So I say, yeah, he's over there by the Zamboni doors. The lady leaves her daughter and skates over to confront a Zamboni driver. That was the last I dealt with her as she left shortly after. The rest of this conversation is constructed from what I heard from my co-workers and supervisors and as such is not 100% accurate as to what was said, but contains the main points. Excuse me, that man, pointing to me, is telling me I can't skate backwards when I'm teaching my daughter. Um, yeah, that's one of the rules. It's for safety reasons. Well, how am I supposed to teach my daughter? At this point, another driver who just finished refilling the Zamboni came over to deal with her. 
You're gonna have to find a way around it, or you can just go upstairs and sign her up for skating lessons on a Tuesday night. Well, what time are they at? They go from 7 to 8. That won't work. Her bedtime is 6. Keep in mind that this kid looks no younger than 8 years old. Well, sorry then, you're out of luck. The entitled mother then left. On my Friday night, the next week, another Zamboni driver filled me in on what happened after she left, which was shortly after this other driver arrived for her shift. Again, this is reconstructed from what I was told. She bustled in. Excuse me, can I have the names of everyone working right now? Uh, why? I'm going to call the city and get them fired. What did they do? They told me I can't skate backwards even though I'm teaching my daughter to skate. You can't get them fired for that. They're doing their jobs. The lady apparently just got a look on her face, suggesting she had realized that she couldn't win, and then left. I never saw her again after that day. Well, thank you for making me look up what a Zamboni is on a Google search that quite frankly went on a bit longer than it should have, due to me not understanding why it's commonly called that, rather than just being called an ice smoother or a resurfacer. This lady is comedy gold though. I love that after the first round of complaints, going home, stewing on this egregious offense against her for a week, she wasn't able to work out that complaining here was pointless. She had to drive all the way back to the rink, and these things are never in convenient locations, begin voicing her complaints, and be told the very obvious fact that nobody could possibly get into trouble for this. Also, these people were doing their jobs. She literally had the reasoning behind the rule, a viable alternative in the form of skate lessons, and she still had the nerve to get offended from it. I just don't understand. And threatening to take the employees of the rink to City Hall over this might be even slightly dumber than the usual Karens we get, who claim that they're going to go to the police over blatantly non-illegal things. My neighbor sued me after harassing my dog for months, and lost horribly. About six or seven months ago, my neighbor got a drone. I don't mind people having hobbies, but for some reason he insisted on flying like the biggest jerk possible. He would hover in front of other houses and windows, try to race cars going down the road, and worst of all, he had a habit of flying his drone in my fenced backyard, buzzing over my dog, and diving just low enough over his head before circling around to do it again. My dog isn't small, he's about 70 pounds and a malamute, but the drone terrified my papa, and I was worried what would happen if it hit him. I asked my neighbor several times to please not fly in my yard, and explained that it was scaring my dog. My neighbor basically told me to get lost and laughed in my face. When it still continued, I called the cops. Unfortunately, there wasn't much they could do other than ask him to please not fly over my house and property. Finally, in late December, it happened. My dog got tired of his crap and managed to catch the drone right as it was diving towards him. He shredded the drone. The thing was just a jumbled mess of wires and plastic. My neighbor was angry. He stormed over to my house, swearing and threatening me, which I ignored. A week later, I got a summons to small claims court. My neighbor wanted 900 bucks for the cost of his drone and an additional 300 for supposedly denying him access to his property. The drone sat in my yard for a couple of hours before it was retrieved. Screw that. My neighbor could have killed my dog. I don't have kids or a girlfriend, I just have my dog, who's my best friend, for the past seven years. That dog has moved with me three times, was there when I graduated college, saw me buy my first house and my first new car. I love my dog. I went to legal advice and got some great help from them. Turns out, him suing me was the best thing to ever happen. When we got to small claims court, the judge basically laughed away his claims that I'd intentionally trained my dog to attack his drone, but little did he know I'd prepared a little surprise of my own. I had dozens of photos of my yard showing it was impossible for him to accidentally fly that low to my dog. Videos of him harassing my dog in the past, and I'd saved all of my medical bills from taking my dog to the vet. 700 bucks for an x-ray? Check. Another 250 to sedate him during? Why not? Don't want him being uncomfortable. Full dental exam with tooth cleaning and repair? 400 bucks. Then there was the cost of anti-anxiety meds and a secondary checkup wet food for a week in case his teeth were hurt, and extra just for good measure. In the end, this idiot ended up owing me almost 2,000 bucks and now is being investigated by the FAA for not having a registered drone and violating several FAA regulations concerning drone flight. 
too close to an airport, too close to other people, and out of sight of operator and way above maximum altitude. Enjoy never being allowed to fly drones again, idiot. Too far? Am I the jerk? Okay, so yet another story that makes the narrator Google a term, and this time it was what the FAA was. And yeah, the Federal Aviation Administration had every right to be coming after this guy. What a moron. Apparently, you do have to register drones of a certain size with them. Which begs the question of why he thought it was a good idea to lodge a legal complaint against you when the inevitable consequence of his obnoxious behavior happened. Getting 2000 bucks in a countersuit feels ridiculous, but hey, this moron came after you for 1200 so why not pay him back with prejudice? He would have gone after you for more if he thought he had a shot, given that 300 was for the emotional damage of not letting him on the lawn to pick his drone up. Maybe this was all a plan from that guy, some stupid scheme that he had to collect a bunch of money with a drone that he stole. Also, you guys were lucky that your dog wasn't hurt by that drone and its buzzing propellers and its circuits when he bit into it. In any case, Drone Pilot is the jerk, which is doing no favors for the stereotypes a lot of society holds for these particular hobbyists, but there you go. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. Or if you want to check out some great music, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot. Everything linked in the description.